Good evening, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. We are closing the night out with a long break right here. 2017 Bowman Baseball. This is a 12-box hobby case. Uh, random team break number four from jazbeeshobbyland.com. You know about the, the combo teams right here. Uh, paper cards will not ship. Paper-based cards will not ship unless, obviously, if they're numbered paper, then I'll, we'll obviously sleeve and top load those and send those off to you. But paper-based won't ship. I think everyone knows that by now. All right. Um... There's all the folks involved right here. Now, if you see a little rooftop next to your name, that means you got this spot from our spot randomizer earlier today on the Saturday, spot random 31. There are the combo teams right here. We're going to randomize each list four times. Good luck. Three and a one. One, two, three, and fourth and final time. Greg on the pole. Mike Koontz in the number 28 spot. All right, and then three and a one, four times for the teams. One, two, three, and fourth and final time. O's and Marlins on top, Cubs on the bottom. So let's see what everyone has. Greg, with the spot random spot, you get the Orioles and the Marlins. Greg with the Diamondbacks, Gabriel with the Reds, John with the Astros, TB with the Mets, Gabe with the Indians, Scoop with the Phillies, Kike Hernandez with the Rangers, Matthew with the Angels and Dodgers, Brett with the Nationals and Royals, Lee with the Twins and Red Sox, John Parker with the Padres, Lee with the Pirates, Matthew with the A's, Brett with the Giants, Matthew with the Jays, Richard, you got the Yankees, Jason with the uh, Cardinals, Coop, Tigers and White Sox, Joe P., with the Mariners Rays, Matthew with the Rockies, John B with the Braves, Jason with the Brewers, and Mike Koontz with the Cubs. So there you go. So for our last break of the night, there we have it. Random team break number four. I'm gonna pause the video, allow for some trades, and when we come back, when we come back, we'll have this hour and a half break. All right, thanks very much, everyone. Stick around, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, folks. So uh, there were no trades. So this list right here remains the same. On a Saturday, 12-box hobby, random team number four, Bowman Baseball, our last break of the night. We will be back on Monday to do uh, to do more breaks, 3 o'clock Pacific, all the way to 11 o'clock Pacific. 3 to 11 Pacific, Monday through Saturday is what we do. This is a long break, so hopefully I gave you sufficient enough time to kick back, get a glass of water, maybe an adult beverage, whatever you need. So I asked who, who's here with me for this break. It looks like just Chris Dunn, Michael G, and Arthur are the only ones here. Well, you guys will have to keep me company. All right. Slide these over this way. All right, one autograph per box, 12 autos. Where's my basuda or over here? Trash cans here. So settle in folks, this is gonna be a long one. All right. Here we go. Embarking on a Bowman adventure. That's all right, onlookers are okay too. I just need people to keep me company for the next hour and a half. Even if you're a spectator. All right. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to bring up mlb.com. Let's get some baseball scores in my face here. What happened today? Were the Dodgers bags of D's? Oh no, the Dodgers still playing. Oh, is MLB TV playing the Dodgers? Oh no, those are just highlights. Bottom of the eighth, the Dodgers are losing 10-6. But someone hit a home run. Oh, Cody Ballinger hit a home run. I see. Ballinger not in this set, folks. He was a bit of a surprise. He's in 2015 Bowman Chrome Baseball, from what I understand. I'll try to get our hands on that. Let's see what other scores are happening here. 
Minnesota and Kansas City were postponed. Diamondbacks pounding on the Padres 9-1. White Sox destroying the Mariners 16-1. Detroit over the Rangers 9-3. Uh, Giants beating the Cardinals 3-1 in extras. 5-2 Braves over the Nationals. 9-5 Rays over the Yankees. Cincinnati and Colorado, two of the hottest teams, hotter teams in baseball facing each other. 12-8. Cleveland shutting out the Astros 3-0. Oakland over the Red Sox 8-3. Pittsburgh over the Phillies 6-3 in the battle of in the Battle of uh, Battle of Pennsylvania, and then the Milwaukee Chicago game was postponed as well. The only game happening right now is that Dodgers is that Dodgers game. Let me adjust my focus here a little bit. Right about there. All right. So I'm going to breeze through these paper, which we are not shipping. Chrome, we are shipping. And we're just looking for that one auto and numbered cards. Now I realize that this year is pretty weird because they don't really distinguish between the silver parallel and the um, and the black parallel one of ones. So what we're gonna do is our shipping team goes through all the paper and make sure that we don't lose any uh, any silver paper, which are out of 499. Sometimes I can kind of spot them, but it's actually almost impossible <laughs> during the course of a break. But we will still send those off to you, so a handful of you should be getting those. Putting everything in the wrong pile right now. Mix it up already. <laughs> All right, so breeze through this paper. Chris Dunn is saying with all the, oh, nice. Hang on, Chris. Look at this. We're not going to miss this one. O Oscar De La Cruz, orange. Five out of 25. Nice orange paper for the Cubs. That goes to Mike Kuntz. Or are the Brewers in first? I thought the Reds were in first for a little bit. Chris Dunn was saying, with all the uh, movement in technology, there should be an automatic pack opener on the horizon. I just have to hold out for a few more years. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. What happens when... when uh... See, that's a blessing and a curse, Chris. Let me know what you guys think about automatic pack openers. Here's what happens. When you have automatic pack openers, then everyone thinks they can be a case breaker, right? You know, it's like, well, I can do it. That automatic pack opener will do it. But then where, what are the intangibles that you want from your case breaker? A mild level of entertainment. The ability to maybe sell out a break, maybe encourage people to get into a certain kind of break and fill that. I don't know. Where does that leave the state of case breakers? And then you get a lot more amateurs. Then it'll be amateur hour. People come in and it's like, oh, yeah, I can totally do it. Just have the machine do it all. Alex Kirilov, nice. Twins prospect, purple 169 out of 250. That'll go to Minnesota. That'll be for Lee C, who got the uh, Twins in a spot randomizer. These are buybacks. You can tell by the stamp right here. And that's obviously a facsimile autograph. And there's Anderson Espinoza. That's your autograph. Padres auto. Nice. It might need him to get called up sooner rather than later. So Padres. Uh, that will be John Parker with the Padres. Nice. Freddie Peralta. 353 out of 499 refractor for the brew crew that goes to jason cox who got the brewers 
Purple paper, Steven Strasburg, 19 out of 250 for the Nationals. Brett. That's right, Chris Dunn. You can't buy personality. Exactly. This is what happened when... Um, there's Wally Joyner. Remember Wally Joyner? I remember him as an angel. Um, that goes to the Royals, though. That's for Brett. Uh, it's like when... when Music recording technology became a lot more uh, ubiquitous, right? A lot more broad. You know, that's Cody Bellinger paper. Um, okay, so that was our first box. So if 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 everyone can has access to to music recording gear, that's a blessing and a curse, right? It's like great. Now everyone, you don't have to be rich or buy studio time to buy like some gear. You know, and record some music, and and you can upload it to YouTube or SoundCloud, and then you know. You can put it all over the world and everyone can hear your music. So, which is on the surface is great, right? You know, power to the people, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then you realize that, <laughs> then you realize that a lot of people are just end up recording crap and <laughs> putting it out on the internet. So you get more crap, essentially, right? More, more junk ends up out there. So if you have automatic pack openers, If you have automatic pack openers, that invites just more amateur hour, right? More junk to end up out there. That's what I'm afraid of. What we need, what I need is, thank you, Michael. Michael G's like, you got showmanship though, Joe, yeah. See, you can't pay for that, like Chris Dunn said. Um, what we do need, though, and this is something, this is an idea that Jaskies has kicked around for a little bit, um, is is to have, like, a channel that's just like Bowman, you know? Um, Bowman, obviously, because of all the prospects and whatnot, think about it. Every year, you know, there's a new hot prospect to collect in Bowman baseball. And everyone wants to do previous years of Bowman baseball, right? Because of now those prospects have turned into uh, have turned into uh, stars, you know. So what we have definitely thought of is having a Bowman baseball only channel, like Jaspie's Bowman baseball, basically. And so all day, all it is is just Bowman baseball, right? Old stuff, new stuff, whatever. But like full case breaks, you know, we'll ship everything. You know, there'll just be a team dedicated to Bowman baseball. And just have someone do that, you know. Because I like doing Bowman baseball. There's a lot of cool hits that are in here. In spite of its length, it's kind of a fun break to do. Um, but, you know, it kind of it, it's kind of a big chunk of the night. It's like an hour and a half break. So it takes up a big chunk of the night. So... When that happens, you know, then there are other people who are like, oh, man, like, you know, like Rickshaw, who was like, oh, I thought that break was going to go tonight, you know. And so that kind of gets in the way sometimes. So maybe a, I don't know, what do you guys think? Just a Jaspies Bowman baseball channel. All things Bowman baseball. You know, like this stuff. All things Bowman baseball on a separate channel. So now you can still join breaks, you know. But it'll just like things will just be going on concurrently. I think that could be interesting. It's I think it'd be worth it actually. <laughs> All right. Let's put the uh, hits right here. Let's put the paper right here. Actually, I'll put these over here. All right. So we got Andy Abanez. So these. Oh, I thought this was a. Uh, I thought this was going to be numbered, but we'll still sleeve it up. Oh, let me go here. Okay, just get a rip minion. That's true. I don't know if the budget allows for like another person to just open up packs for me. Yeah, there you go. Chris Dunn saying, I could break anywhere and I watch a lot of breakers. <laughs> but I go broke at Jaspies for the personality. Well, that's what we figured. Like, if I'm... If if you're going to watch someone for hours at a, at, a, at a time, you know, like, 
the person, whoever that you watch, like has got to be at least mildly entertaining because then you'll just be like, oh God, you know, like, am I really gonna have to watch this guy for X amount of hours for all this? So I think for every breaker, and what's great is that, you know, everyone will have their own breaker, right? You know, like some, some people uh, like breaking with us, some people re like breaking with other people, blah, 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 blah. But at the end of the day, there's enough people out there where you'll find that person that fits your personality really well. And and I think that's, I think that's great because you have a lot of options. 24 hour Walmart, <laughs> oh man, who's gonna man that store? Just someone's just gonna sit here. There's Cabrian Hayes at a four ninety nine refractor for the Pirates Lee. Who's gonna Who's gonna do that store? <laughs> try to Try to convince someone to work the uh, overnight shift. These Chrome World Baseball Classics will be randomizing as one lot, by the way, to one person in the break. I still haven't seen the auto yet. Chris Chef. Do not remember Chris Chef. I think the, the different colored foil also represents their level of short printedness. Three shifts, three breakers. That's true. The thing is, we got we got to find someone that that we can trust to be here at the store overnight when everyone's asleep. <laughs> Kevin Gross, I remember Kevin Gross, old Kevin Gross for the Dodgers. And there's our autograph, Kyle Funkhauser. We want the funk. Gotta have that funk. Mm, we want the funk. That's for Scott Cooper. Gotta have that funk. We want the funk. Gotta have that funk. Scott Cooper got the funk from a spot randomizer. He got a randomizer spot in this break and got randomized the Tigers and got the funk. Were you numbered? I don't think this is a refractor. No, there's not. All right. Yeah, we gotta have someone do an overnight shift. You know, I don't know if we remember Chris and everybody else. We experimented with we experimented with a a sort of late night shift. So like I think how did we do it? I don't know if you guys remember this, but and we only did it for a few months. But some of you might remember it. Like I went from I think I went from like two o'clock, one or two o'clock to like nine o'clock, right? Or 10 o'clock, something like that. And then Nick Jaspi would go on and he would go from like 10 o'clock to like two or 3 a.m. or something like that. So we were gonna do that just to give it a shot because you know we thought, oh, hey, maybe there'll be enough of a customer base on the West Coast that stay up late. And enough uh, people from maybe like Hawaii or, or internationally that would be up late as well. Because we, we, we were just kind of, after we would finish our, our, our nights, we would look at like other breakers and we'd be like, oh, these guys are still up and the rooms seem to be full, breaks seem to be filling, you know. Um, and we tried it, it didn't really work out though. I don't know if we have the, I don't know. I don't know if we have the personality to be these wild like late night breakers. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, that's Chris Dunn was saying, yeah, there could be a lot of late night drunk money out there. That's true. See, the thing is, we kind of angled, we kind of lean a little bit more towards like full case breaks or like higher end stuff, you know? 
how many of those kind of people are getting drunk and being like, oh, let's go? Or is it more like, oh, hey, you know, someone has like a three box break of Bowman baseball, you know, let's, for whatever, let's give that a shot, you know? I don't know. We did experiment for a little bit. I guess we could try again. We did experiment for a little bit. After a while, it didn't really, didn't really work out. We're considering, we think like maybe a, a uh, daytime spot from morning to like lunch, I think could be an option for us. We'll see if that happens though. I don't know. A lot of things in the Jaspies pipeline, folks. Um, but hard to maneuver. Oh, Tom. Tom Nichols likes the uh, likes the big hundred hundred fifty dollar mixers. Yeah, we don't do those very often, but. Nice purple paper right here. Uh, Antonio Senzatella, 88 out of 250. Purple paper going to the Rockies. Matthew Rourke, I like it when the parallels match the team colors. Um, yeah, but, but uh, you know, a few times a year, we'll end up doing those big $100, $150 mixers. It takes the right kind of uh, takes the right kind of boxes, though. You know what I mean? We can't just throw a bunch of stuff together, you know, and just be like, "All right, here we go." You know, we've got to we got to have like some sort of anchor, right? Maybe we have like a box of flawless football as the anchor, you know, so that kind of le lures people into the break, and then you got to kind of surround it with some solid product where people can still get a lot of hits, so people feel like they're, you know, so people do get their value for a hundred, hundred fifty bucks. I'm sure we'll be able to do that. Yeah, I know. See that 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 that's the difficulty. Mike Soroka, gold. Chris Dunn, uh, forty-one out of fifty for the Braves. That goes to John B. Nice gold chrome. Yeah, we we do need to try to get. Well, I think what we need to do is maybe try to build like some smaller like mixer type stuff. You know what I mean? A little more budget-friendly mixers that people can get into. Talent pipeline. Is this orange? Is this numbered? Yeah, one out of 25. Nice. Why aren't they calling up Ahmed Rosario? They need to. It's not like the Mets are good this year. Uh, <laughs> Todd B with the Mets. Yeah, we got to try to work in some more inexpensive breaks into the action Chris Dunn. It's a little difficult, though. Ichiro Blue Paper. 101 out of 150. Nice. For the Marlins. That goes to... That's a combo team. Greg. With the Orioles and Marlins combo team. I don't remember this guy. Nick Neuenbauer. And there's our autograph. Uh, Lucas Urseg. Urkeg? Urseg. Refractor auto out of 499. That is 81 out of 499 for the Brew Crew. Milwaukee Brewers, that would be Jason Cox. Let's see if there's other parallels that we can find here. See, not silver paper. You would think it looks like it, but it's it's not. Silver paper's out of four ninety nine, so it's not like it's like a million dollar card or anything like that. But still, you know, it's the principle of the matter. Otherwise, I think this Bowman baseball this year looks pretty nice. Another buyback. Philip Lyra, eh, vague, vague memories. All right. Nice one. Yeah, we will sleeve up and top load these uh, buybacks too because I don't know which ones are super short printed and which ones aren't. Or even short printed in general. I know, I think Beckett or Cardboard Connection 
has, um, I think Beckett or Cardboard Connection has some resources on those uh, foil stamps on those buybacks. So I think that can be somewhat easily researched. All right, next box. Actually, yeah, you know what? Um, no, that's a good call, actually, because you can, we can still dig up that 2015 football stuff from Tops. They're they're pretty they're at good prices, and they still deliver some pretty nice hits too. But yeah, I was saying earlier, I think Jaspies, we do have a um, we do have a lot of ideas in the pipeline. It just it's just a matter of kind of getting it getting it all together, you know. I don't think people realize, uh, especially people who are somewhat newer to to Jaspies, how small our team is. Like we have good production value, we got a store, it seems like we got a lot of people here. We don't really. We just have uh, we have me, Jason Jaspie who does the hockey channel. We have Axel, who does the a lot of the sorting and shipping for us with a little help from another guy, uh, Chris. And then Bossman is pretty much like putting in, in work, you know, helping with the shipping and sorting and all that sort of stuff too. Uh, Nick as well, but Nick pretty much has a full-time job sourcing product, ordering product, taking inventory, with, keeping track of the inventory of all the product that Jason and I break every night, you know, and then post like literally the posting of product on their on their website is a challenge as well digging up prices you know pick your team price blah blah blah. that's a whole other job too and he kind of does some other administrative stuff as well and that's it that's our team <laughs> you know so we need to we need to uh well, we need to expand. I, th I think that's, that's all, all that's on the table. You know what I mean? That's why I say when we say we've got ideas in the pipeline, we just kind of have to get to um, a good point where we can be like, okay, now let's get, now let's get a, um, it might, it possibly are there. Uh, now we'll get to, uh, you know, we got to get a bigger store, you know? So once we get a bigger store, let's, let's hire some, we got to hire a couple more people, you know, to accommodate because right now, if even if we hired a couple more people, I don't know where Arthur. You've seen our store. You visited before. It's small, right? Like, try to add a couple more people, spread out, and try to try to like uh, try to sort out a Bowman break that requires a little extra real estate, which we don't have at the moment. Because of hockey, our hockey channel, we've got a lot of a uh, lot a lot of inventory kind of piling, not piling up, but it's just we can't buy as much stuff because <laughs> because we're like, oh, we got to make room for hockey. We gotta do this. But if we then the conundrum is, hey, well, if we move to a bigger, you know, if we move to a bigger location, then and add more people to the payroll, classic business, right? Then you then you got to expect, like, you know, sales to increase and grow as well. And you know that would be on me and Jason to do that. And you know, with your guys' support and help, take our business to another level. You know, so. Not quite as easy as 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 be like as being like, all right, let's just get a new store, hire a new sorter. You know, how do you convince someone? Hey, do you want to spend a few hours a day, you know, sorting out a Bowman baseball break? So, we are looking for people though. Ruben, where where do you live? We are we are actually looking for a new sorter, not a new sorter, an additional sorter that is. I mean, really, I know a lot of people are just are bummed about like paper base and vet base often not shipping in most of our breaks. It's it's really it's not because we're penny pinching. We're trying to be mean, you know. Like it's literally <laughs> logistical. It will just take too long. You know, it already takes us long enough to 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 sort this out. Mitch Keller for the Pirates. One forty nine out of one fifty. That's blue paper for the Pirates. That'll go to Lee. Oh, you're, oh, you're in Tennessee. That doesn't help us. I need... Oh, move back. Josh Beckett. 
Red Sox edition. Doesn't help us if you're all the way out there. And Lucas Urseg again, but this time orange. 18 out of 25. That's a nice low number there. Brewers, Jason Cox, nice. Uh, I, well, I didn't see... No, I don't think there's any, any reds autos. These ones aren't numbered, by the way. These are the 70th, 70th anniversary ones. But all those will go as one lot. Not a lot of parallels in this one. Maybe because that was the orange? Yeah, maybe. Brian McRae. I remember him. All right. So yeah, if anybody's listening and is in the Los Angeles area, And interested, uh, in, and interested in, uh, excuse me, joining our team to join the sorting and shipping team. Let us know. You get to work in beautiful Redondo Beach, California. Just email us, jaspieshobbyland at gmail dot com. Um, you get to work in beautiful Redondo Beach, California, or hop, skip, and a jump away from the beach. You get to work with me every day. I'll be plenty of hours, flexible schedule. If you need it, if you go to like school or something. Um, so just email us, jaspieshobby at gmail.com. We are looking for people. Yeah, Michael G, Chris Dunn, they're gonna, you guys are on your way, gonna relocate. This is this is not like a million dollar salary job. Let's 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 be honest here. <laughs> you know, LA's not cheap to live, but this is the, we're thinking this is like a nice part time job for like a student or something like that. But uh, but it is it is fun. I mean, really, I think what we realize is that if we're like especially if we're developing like breakers, that starting them in the in the sorting and shipping department. You know, starting them there and having them eventually transition into breaking. So there's there's like upward mobility, if you want to call it that. There's upward mobility. So we, Jason would have started. Jason would have started doing um, breaks much earlier. He was just shy about being on camera. But but usually, you know, everyone will start in the shipping and sorting department. I think that's a good way to do it because then you get a good idea of the entire uh, cycle. And, you know, we. We buy the inventory. We sell the brake. Joe rips it. It gets sorted out here. It gets top loaded. It does this, you know, and then it then it you know gets shipped out and people receive their hits, resell their hits, buy back in again, you know. So, I think it's a good it's a good to see it's good to see that process. I think that works nicely. It's purple chrome. We'll just randomize this as one lot with everything too. Uh, what's minimum wage in California? I forget. I think it went up recently. I'm not sure though. But unless you, most people, most of you will be shocked at the cost of living here in California. You know, if you if you lived here, I, I was you know I was born in Ohio, but my folks moved to Southern California when I was really young. I kind of near Gabriel's area, I think uh, Long Beach area. Um, then we moved into the inner suburbs, 909. But if you're used to it, there's Francisco Rios, 138 out of 150, blue chrome for the Blue Jays. That'll be for Matthew Rourke. You're kind of used to it. You know what I mean? You're kind of used to all of the, uh, you know, whatever it costs. Again, these 70th anniversaries are not numbered. 
uh, you get kind of used to how much, how expensive everything is. But for people who have grown up elsewhere outside of basically San Francisco and New York, people will be like, oh my God, like, that, that's so expensive. How do people live out there? Well, hey, Michael G. If you wanna, if you wanna cruise out here, you know we'd be we'd be more than happy to have you. Scott, Scott Lewis, maybe, maybe, I think, twins, buyback. And there's the autograph, nice, Nick Senzel. There you go, for the Reds. Is that Gabriel, I think? Yeah. Look at that, he's a second overall pick last year. Nick Senzel. There you go, Gabe. That's the one that you want. Woo, woo, woo. Orange paper, Matt Strame. Five out of 25. That goes to the Royals, Brett, with that one. I know, that's a try to trade, couldn't trade mojo, Michael G. That's for sure. All right. some more room here. Tried to trade, couldn't trade Mojo. Strikes again. Uh, the Nick Senzel was, was conspicuously absent in Bowman's best last year. Like all, the number one pick was there. Number three pick was there. Uh, Rich Becker for the Twins. But Senzel was not there for some reason. I guess they were holding him out for, for this set. All right, there you go. All right, we're about halfway there, folks. Yeah, Michael G and Gabriel talking trading strategy. What do you guys think about trading strategy and break? Some people, some people say, I, I don't trade at all. Gabriel says, you know, he likes, he just likes to see what offers you can get. True. My. My, my favorite, for whatever reason, this always cracks me up. I mean, it's just kind of the way he says it. But uh, Jason K, K-A-Y, Jason K, um, when he first started breaking with us, and I think it was just because he had such a, like, a good-natured spirit about it. Like he was like pitching it as a good deal. Like he would get randomized like, I don't know, like the Ravens or something like that. And he'd be like, Ravens for Cowboys? Question mark? <laughs> like in 2016 product. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just something about it would just get me every time. It was like this, this like, and this is something I respect. It's like this big, like, almost delusional positivity. It's like, hey, you never know. <laughs> but yeah, trading always scares me. Trading, trading makes me nervous. I can't do it. I wouldn't be able to do it.
Oh. Disaster. They're fine. All right, actually, I'm going to open up a couple more boxes and just kind of go from there. We're kind of at the midway point, so we'll stack some packs here. Yeah. See, so what? So what? What is the? What's what? Let's talk about this. This isn't. I don't. This has never happened. But um, what is what is breaker ethics? Breaker etiquette, right? If there, yeah, let's say there's a noob in the room, or someone realizes, all right, see you, Arthur. Someone, someone mixes up 2015 and 2016 product, right? What's what is my obligation? Do I say, hey, don't be an idiot, <laughs> you know? Or do I do I say, hey? You know, you got to, I mean, that's the decision that you made. That's what happens. I don't know. Usually here's how I have played. I, I kind of, I kind of sit on the fence on this one. I, um, I just kind of go, I just, I don't mention a specific trade or anything like that, but I just kind of go, Hey, don't forget to look at the checklist or, you know what I mean? You know, I'll say that kind of generally I'll say, Hey, remember this is 2015 not 2016 or something like that. You know, I'll say stuff like that. Because at the same time, I don't want to, I don't want to, thanks Nick. Yeah, Nick Drasky says, you're usually good about posting checklists and say do your research. Exactly. And that's that's one of the big reasons why, because I don't want to get in the middle of a trade and, be, and someone have someone be pissed and be like, hey, that was going to be a great trade for me. That guy didn't know crap. And I would totally would have, I don't want to get in that kind of argument. You know what I mean? I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to step on toes. You know what I mean? I don't want to be like, you know, oh, why'd you convince him not to take the trade? You know? So yeah, I don't want to be, I don't want to be too influential in a, in, in, in a trade. Um, you know, I, I, it's it's a case by case basis. If if it's like, I don't know, if someone if someone was in the room and it was like clearly like a twelve year old kid, you know, who asked his dad to join in his first Jaspies break, and someone some veteran is trying to fleece him, you know, then I'd be like, come on, man, <laughs> you know, like don't fleece the kid. You know what I mean? Maybe I'd say something like that. That hasn't happened, but but yeah, usually I just kind of fence it. And I just be like, and, and yeah, like Drowski said, I'll just be like, hey guys, just look at the checklist, you know, like make sure you pay attention to what year it is. I want to remind everybody about that. And I think usually that works out. But yeah, we don't we don't want to we don't want to become arbitrators, you know. But we don't we tend not to do too many breaks that involve trades anyway. So I think. I think we kind of avoid that situation. Oh, the Dodgers game's over. They lost to the Marlins. Did anyone get hurt? John Carlos Stanton, three for five. Huh? That's good for my fantasy team, I guess. Homers? Oh, no homers. Three doubles. Wow. All right. I'm going to open up one more box and I'll go through the cards. All right, answer me this, baseball fans. John Carlos Stanton, does he, does he play... Uh, does he play 150 games this season? Giancarlo Stan has only played 150 games once in his career, and that was the second year, his second year in the league. And I don't think he's played over played over 140 once. Played 120 games a few times, and then has played like less than 100 games 
twice, I think. And the dude's getting paid <laughs> a lot for a long time. Dude just can't stay healthy. Dude crushes. Giancarlo Stanton crushes when he's healthy, but he has not exhibited that he could say, I mean, maybe later in his career, he'll somehow miraculously stay healthy, but the guy is like 28 or 29 already. I guess kind of prime, I guess these are prime years, right? Yeah, I mean, right, pitch of the fate. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that was his fault. <laughs> that was his fault, you know, but, but you know, aside from that, it's, he has struggled to stay healthy, and I think that's that's kind of a difficulty, especially when you're paying that guy that kind of money. Um, I saw somewhere something crazy where Harold Baines on MLB Tonight was saying, "Hey, the the Dodgers should trade Yasiel Puig, and and then for for Stanton." And I was just like, and "Like Yasiel Puig and prospects for Stanton." And I think the basis of his reasoning was like, "Oh, because the Dodgers can absorb." That contract. I don't think the Dodgers are going to do the Marlins a favor by eating that contract, you know, that twenty-five million a year contract, and send away Puig and prospect for a guy that has not proven he could play, you know, year to year, all season long, or be a factor in the playoffs, you know, because he gets injured, you know. So like, I thought that was crazy. Harold Baines, if you're listening, that's my hot take of the day. You're crazy. Well, that's where he should go, Rick Hunt. He should go to the AL. That's that's where he should go. He should just DH. Braun for Puig? See, now that's interesting. These are not numbered, but they'll still ship. See, that is interesting. Does Milwaukee want Puig? Puig's a polarizing character. I like him. I think he's a little misunderstood, but I think he's a polarizing character. Do the Dodgers want Braun? A guy who took Matt Kemp's MVP away from him. I don't know. Two controversial characters being traded for each other. Could work. Suggesting straight up, Michael G. That would give me pause. I would have to think about that. I wouldn't flat out say no. Uh, Demerit. Travis Demerit for the Braves. 87 out of 150. Blue Chrome. For the Bravos, that'll go to John B. Purple paper, Josh Stalmont, 23 out of 250 for the Royals. Brett with that one. You know, Baseball America has has uh, the Braves farm system as the best leading into this season. Top farm system, right? Taking out like you know players like Udias and and Bellinger who were made like major league ready, taking out those like those rookies already playing or those prospects who are playing regu somewhat regularly, they took those guys out. So after taking all those guys out, they say the Braves have the top farm system, which I can see. Now someone brought up a question. Hey, does can can the Braves? I saw this on Reddit. Can the Braves? Could the Braves win the World Series in 10 seasons, in 10 years? Kind of a long time, but you know anything can happen, right? In 10 years? But can the Braves specifically win the World Series in 10 years? I think they can, right? There's Aaron Hillman for the, uh, for the Mets. I mean, obviously they have the farm system. Got a, young, a lot of young players coming up. So even if... Let's say with all those young players they have, let's even half a quarter of them work out. There's the autograph, Fernando Romero. The twins need the pitching. Minnesota, that goes to Lee. So they got farm system, guys coming up the ranks, even if a quarter of those players, you know, because a lot of a lot of players are gonna become busts. You know, so let's say, you know, most of them become busts, but you get at least a few everyday players, possible all stars, you know. Dansby Swanson could be a superstar, you know. So, like, let's say 
all that comes together. Freddie Freeman's on the team for a while. He had an MVP season before he got hit in the wrist. Richie Sexton, remember him? He's on the Brewers for a little while, too. That That is Mariners' edition of Richie Sexton. We'll go to the Mariners. But I think they can. And I think the Braves have secret... They have secret money. You know what I mean? Like, they're not going to... They're not just going to wildly overspend, you know. But if they had to, I think they could pay for, like, a big free agent. Machado, Bryce Harper, maybe. Something like that. I think they have they have that kind of money to, to do it if they had to. They paid Freddie Freeman, you know. I mean, they can't be loosey-goosey with the money, but I think... I think they can if they needed to. Speaking of Dansby, there he is. So that, that stack is another box. Astros, you remember that article three or four years ago? Three or four years ago, on the cover of Sports Illustrated, they said they had a picture of George Springer on the front. A picture of George Springer on the front and said, your 2017 World Series champions, the Astros. You guys remember that article? Sports Illustrated? Well, the Astros are having a pretty nice season. Imagine if that came true. It could happen. I think the, couldn't the Astros do it? What do you guys think? Do you guys remember that article? Seventieth anniversary red paper. I think Dallas Keuchel went on the DL recently. I think they can do it. Devon White. Angels edition. Great stash for who? Devon White? Does he make the all stash team? Michael G? I think we talked all stash team. There are two things that I need to, that we really need to put to paper. Maybe I'll do it in the Facebook group over the weekend. Uh, we need to come up with the all stash team. And like, it's gotta be like per, by position. We gotta, we gotta find all, all nine, you know, which would create some controversy because I think there's a lot of pitchers with great stashes. P.J. Conlin for the Mets, purple chrome, 22 out of 250. We need to come up with an all-stash team. And another team that we want to come up with is the all-fish team. That might be a little bit harder, but I think we can fill all positions, all field positions with, with fish, right? Think about it. Roberto Almar, Orioles edition. And there's your autograph for the Padres. Luis Almanzar. 272 out of 499. Refractor autograph for the Padres. John Parker with the Padres. Steve Balboni at first for the all-stash team. Yeah, so Raleigh Fingers can only be in the pitching position. So that leaves out guys like, um, I don't know, other guys that had great stashes. A lot, a lot of pitchers seem to have really good stashes. So that means if Raleigh takes that pitching spot, you know, maybe you take... 
Where does Eckersley go? I guess I guess maybe you have a closer as well. Closer. But then do you take like you, you can make a oh you want to make a five man stash rotation? All right, fair enough. Let's make a five man stash rotation plus closer. Five man stash rotation plus closer will be our stash team. And then the rest. Yeah. Cause I mean how could you how could you not put in like like Sparky Lyles as a closer, right? The Yankees guy. Rick, Rick says Bobby Grinch at second base. All right, this is the next box right here. We're almost there, folks. Thanks for hanging with me. We're almost getting there. We're almost done. Jeff Hoffman purple paper at a 250 for the Rockies. They don't have to be good players, folks. Just have, just have good stashes. Kyle Tucker, gold? Yes. Three out of 50, Kyle Tucker, gold. Bowman's top 100. That goes to the Astros. That's for John B. Nice chrome Cody Bellinger. The all-fish team, I think, is pretty difficult. I mean, you would have, like... You would have Mike Trout, obviously, would be in center field. Catfish Hunter, you know, would be the pitcher there. But I guess you would move, like, Tim Salmon to right. Uh, Mike Carp, I think, could be in first base, right? But I think it's hard to kind of fill the other positions. I'm going to look up the, the all-fish team. We would, we would include fishers as well. I mean. Rick says, Joe, did you know that the Reds weren't allowed to have facial hair until the until the late nineties? That seems kind of late. No, are you serious? No. Eric Davis sported a stash, didn't he? Reds, Eric, maybe he didn't. Jose Vidro, Expos, second baseman. Maybe he didn't have a stash. Oh, Mark Shot just didn't want the, hated the stash. That's crazy. 101 out of 150, blue paper. Thomas Zapuki. Zapucky? Don't know. That goes to the Mets, though. Mets, that's for you, Todd. You know what? Here's, here's the thing that... I like baseball. It's it's fine now. There's no... I, I don't have real huge problems with it institutionally. You know, um... But one thing that you do kind of miss, you know, like... <laughs> is there were like weird owners back then. You know, like there were like quirky teams. There's Miguel Cabrera. Nice, that's for the Tigers, of course. There's a lot of quirky owners and weird, weird folks in baseball. Tristan McKenzie, nice. Purple Chrome for the Indians. Michael G, there you go, 226 of 250. Making it all worthwhile staying up this late with me. Yeah, also oh, Dave Parker had to shave that stash when he came to the Cincinnati. That's crazy.
Oh yeah, are they the purple crawl? Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. The only issue. It's not really an issue either. The only thing is, this break's just kind of long. That's it. But like anybody who does this, it's worth. I mean, the reason why people keep selling it out, the reason why people are even staying up to watch this, is because there's so much secondary resale value here. Or if you just end up just keeping it, you know, you know, if one of these guys become, you know, become a superstar or something like that, Franklin Barreto, Purple Paper, then two uh, two thirty out of two fifty A's. That's from Matthew Work. Then you have like one of their first autos, if not their first auto in a major product, right then and there. That's why you see a lot of these like first Bowman's like collected and graded and kept and, oh, Tristan McKenzie in particular. Yudi Garcia. Three twenty out of four ninety nine. Brian Mundell, refractor for the Astros, and it looks like some orange coming up. And it's Alex Spees. Twenty out of twenty five. Nice, orange. Going to the Rangers. That'll be for Kike Hernandez. Nice. Ulysses Gurriel, Francis Martis, Pedro Alvarez, nice, and Garrett Wiley. All right, looking for the auto out of this box. And then I'll open up the last three boxes and we'll finish this break off. There's the auto. Carson Fulmer. Carson Fulmer has a nice autograph, White Sox. Scott Cooper. Nice one, Scott. Got a spot in this break from a spot randomizer. Got randomized the White Sox and ends up with a Carson Fulmer auto that is not numbered, but still nice nonetheless. Uh, this break, I believe, was $42.99. And we combo two teams, so 28 spots. Something like that. This was actually our last case. We don't have any more. We'll try to order some more, but I think the price went up on this already. That was not numbered. And Dave Nilsson, buyback for the Brew Crew. Almost there. Grant Holmes and Paper Phil Bigford. And there you go. Three boxes left. All right. Almost there, folks. We're getting there. We're getting there. Three boxes to go. Rick is like, hey, remember the uh, 92 Bowman, right? Carlos Delgado, Mike Piazza, Raul Mondesi. I remember those as being somewhat frustrating um, somewhat frustrating years for the Dodgers. Like we would produce these these rookies of the year. I think we did like four in a row or something like that. Caros, Piazza, Mondesi, Nomo, Padeo Nomo, and, and Todd Hollinsworth or something like that. And and the Dodgers had terrible se <laughs> had terrible seasons, you know? 
and I don't know. It was just it was just a frustrating day. The '90s were weird for LA in terms of sports. You know, the Dodgers in the mid mid to to late '90s not so good. Ownership change, Fox, Kevin Brown contract. You know, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then uh, I do remember Pat Listash. I want to say, I remember him as a Blue Jay for some reason. Am I thinking of someone else? I think I'm thinking of Pat Tabler. Um, but yeah, and then and then after that, uh, the, the Lakers in the 90s, pre-Kobe, you know, were, were suffering from like the post, post uh, Showtime Lakers of the 80s and very early 90s. But anyway, 90s were a weird time for LA sports. And then the Rams left and the Raiders left. It was bad times, actually. Rough times. And there was OJ, riots after Rodney King. Yeah. You know what? Uh, 90s were terrible in Los Angeles. Except for those rookies of the year. <laughs> Oh, is that right, Gabe? One more Nick Senzel. A keg from Angel City. Just a, just a, a sixer will be fine. I like darker brews. Uh, and not IPAs. Anything too hopsy kind of screws with my, uh, with my allergies. So three more autographs to go, plus uh, plus whatever parallels we can find out of here. Solid break so far. I'll slide this over here. <coughs> we are off tomorrow. This is our last break of the night. We're off tomorrow. And we're back on Monday. I will personally be back on Tuesday. I need to look up. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to look at the current standings in Major League Baseball right now while we go through this. Let's talk. Let's talk about this. So we're basically what? April, May. We're about... Two and a half months into the season, right? Two and a half months into the season. Oh, Rick, Rick wants an all scrub team. What about an all? Uh, you know what? You, you know what you can make is an all all time Padres team, but with players that the Padres traded away. You know what I mean? Like they had Ozzy Smith on the team for a second. Dave Winfield was on the Padres, you know. There's some other guys, too. Anyway. Uh, AL East. The, the O's are half a game ahead of the Yankees. No, that's right. The O's are doing pretty well. Yeah, Anthony Rizzo, too, right. Um, Tampa Bay Rays are four games behind. The Red Sox struggling. 21 and 21. 
after looking so good last year. What's going on there, Boston? Uh, and Toronto got off to a very slow start. Twins are looking great. They started off the season two years ago really great, too. Yeah, their team is too good to, to be held down for too long. 21-17, half game ahead of the Cleveland Indians, who are doing very well. 22-19 for the Indians. Uh, Tigers are hanging in there, 21-20. and 19-22 for the White Sox, and 17-24 for the Kansas City Royals. They're, they're struggling. I think they're going to have to start thinking of how to kind of retool for the future without completely being out of the picture. Uh... Astros hot. They're 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 running away with that division at the moment. They're six and a half games ahead of the Rangers. Eight games ahead of the Angels. Oakland and yeah, they're 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 running away with it. Uh the Nationals Six games ahead of the second place Braves. Nationals are running away that division. You know, that's the other reason why when we were talking about the Braves earlier in this break, about World Series possibility in the next 10 years, that's why I said, you know what? Braves can do it because who's going to block them in the future? You know, with all their hot farm system and, you know, they could spend a little money too. You know, they got a new stadium, et cetera, et cetera. Like, who's going to stop them? Nationals, their window is kind of small. Like, how long can... You know, Ryan Zimmerman do what, you know, he's doing something incredible, but how long is he going to be around? How long is Max Scherzer going to be around? You know, their farm system isn't that great. Rookie Davis, yes, his name is Rookie. 23 out of 25, <laughs> orange paper for Gabriel. You know, you know, it's hard, hard to have any confidence in the Mets about the about their future. You know, Philadelphia could challenge them. Miami maybe after they, after they get sold to, to Derek Jeter and his, in his consortium group. Mickey Moniak Refractor. Nice. 443 out of 499. Nice one, Phillies. That goes to Scott Cooper. Another spot from the spot random. That's the number one overall pick. Tyler Glass now. Blue paper. 16 out of 150. That goes to the Pirates. That'll be for Lee. We got Craig Colburn. Buyback. For the Nationals. That goes to the Nationals. All the Expos go to the Nationals. There's Rookie Davis again. And Alex Reyes, Blue Chrome. 43 out of 125. Blue Chrome autograph. Jason Cox with the Cardinals. Nice. Alex Reyes was supposed to have a breakout season this year until he had to get the Tommy John. But yeah, who's going to block the Braves? Not, not too many. So I think all you got to do is get into the playoffs, right? Then you never know. I asked my San Francisco Giant friends, like, what years, when you guys won the World Series, what years did you think, you know, at the beginning, in the, even in the middle of the season, that you thought that a World Series victory was a possibility? Every one of them said, none of them. You know, <laughs> like, like there was never a year where we thought, oh, yeah, this is the year from start to finish. We're going to dominate and we're going to get into the World Series, you know, and, and, and win. No, it's a crapshoot sometimes, especially baseball is tough. So all the Braves need to do is get into the playoffs. You never know what can happen. Hey, a very young Mets team went all the way to the World Series. You know what I mean? J.D. Davis, Astros. 15 out of 25. Orange chrome for the Strohs. That goes to John B. Again, love it when the uh, parallel matches the team color. Troy Gloss. Nice. Yeah, Rick Hunt, do you have trivia for us? Baseball trivia for us? Or are you asking if anyone has baseball trivia? Darren's usually good at that stuff. The Porterhouse Steak usually has some, some trivia. But I only saw him earlier tonight. All right, two boxes to go. 
All right, the only player to hit a Grand Slam in an All-Star game. A Grand Slam in an All-Star game. Hmm. I have no idea. Uh, All-Star game. Can you give us a hint on, like, era? I want to say, like, Johnny Bench. Something like Carlton Fisk, something like that. So I feel like it's always a catcher. Whoa, look at this. Wow, for the twins. It's a super fractor. Cole Stewart. One of one Cole Stewart for the Minnesota Twins, Lee Cheeseman, who got this in a spot random. And that was last spot mojo as well. Wow. If you've got the volume up, turn it down. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo! Nice. What a hit. The last, in the last, the second to last box. That's where that was hiding. We got an orange Tristan McKenzie as well. 18 out of 25. Lee with the twins as well. So there they are. So, sorry, who was the answer? Fred Lynn? Is that what it was? Matt Tyus out of 499 for the Angels. That refractor for Matthew Rourke. Paper Donnie Dewey's. Fred Lynn. Tiger's edition of Fred Lynn? Was Fred Lynn always a tiger? In my head, he's a tiger. Um, who did they load the bases on? You know, like that's the other that's the other half of the trivia, Rick. Andrew Sopko. Those are not numbered. Red Sox president. That's the other bit of the trivia. Who who do you, who did who was the bases who was pitching? Who loaded the bases? Was it a combination of pitchers? Was it just one pitcher? And then who did he hit it off? Was it just one pitcher? Atlee Hammaker? There's Craig Graybeck, buyback. Graybeck, buyback. It's Grant Holmes, former Dodger prospect. That'll go to the A's. And Jorge Alfaro, refractor auto for the Phillies. Scott Cooper, 152 out of 499. There's your auto. Who was on base? Who are the people that were driven in? They've got to be, I mean, if they're AL All-Stars, I mean, they've got to be big names, right? Or bigger names. Who was on base when Fred Lynn hit it out? See, I love this kind of stuff. I love this trivia. I got to know. There's Sonny Gray. Nice. Sonny Gray buyback for the A's. Matthew Roark. All right, we're almost there, folks. Almost there. So Rick Hunt is saying that the 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 men on base that Fred Lynn drove in. I see two. Maybe looking at the other one. George Brett. One of them, that's nice. Robin Yount. Oh, and Juan Samuel. Juan Samuel. Oh, they're your three guesses? I, I have no idea. Someone needs to look it up then.
All right, I'm going to sleeve these up, and we're going to get into our last box, boys and girls. You know what? I actually predicted at the 30-minute mark. We're only four minutes over, so, hey, I have been was making good time. All right, so thanks, everybody. Getting to our last box, our last autograph. Nice super fracture for the Minnesota Twins. That is nice. Cole Stewart. We'll randomize these guys, too. All right, last one, boys and girls. We did it. There's Joe Jimenez. 402 out of 499 refractor for the Tigers. Uh, that'll go to Scott Cooper. Is that gold, Hunter Renfro? No, it's not. See? Tricky sometimes. I'll still go to the Padres. No, no one's looking it up. <laughs> There's no, no no answers at the moment. Maybe, maybe people are researching it. Baseballreference.com maybe should have the box score. All-star game. My curiosity is now officially peaked. Buyback, Jose Vidro, Nationals. And Josh Ockamy is your autograph. Red Sox, that's your last one. Lee with that. There you go. So that's it, folks. That's your last autograph. Other parallels. Kevin Newman. Newman. Blue. Not numbered. That goes to the Pirates. That'll be for Lee as well. Not numbered. Love those vintage looking, the vintage cards that they threw in there. All right, Chris Bryant. Looking dapper. Looking for, we already got the auto, so we're looking for maybe another low numbered parallel that we can walk away with. Maybe not, nor maybe. I don't know. Chris Shaw, are you? No. No. Maybe not. Maybe that's it, folks. Paper, buyback. Tony Longmire. That's a kind of a Griffey esque swing right there. Bonus auto, maybe? No? No. Doesn't look like it. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. Thank you so much. We got a quick randomizer for the uh, for the Korean and Japanese players back there. Oh, Rick Hunt has an answer. Winfield, Brett, and Manny. It's not 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 bad. Driving in those guys, huh? All right. So all these cards, including the uh, the the two parallels right here, we're just gonna do these all in one lot. Just makes it easier. None of these none of these uh, players are associated with uh, any major league teams, so that's why we're randomizing them. Let's go back to random.org. Let's get everyone here. So it's from Greg down to Brett. Let's randomize that list. Four and a six, ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, and tenth and final time. Name on top is Lee. Wow, what a break for you, Lee. There you go. Ten times you get these little bonus cards too. Um, 
for the uh, Japanese and Korean players. Uh, these are World Baseball Classic cards right there, all, all chrome. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That was Random Team Break number four on a Saturday. Most of you, it's Sunday. Thanks for hanging out with us. That was 2017 Bowman Baseball. Really good stuff. This is Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.